How's it going amigos? We're back with another subscriber special. I always ask for your guys' suggestions as to what to do for these videos, but this time, you guys went a bit buck wild. The 7k post had 45 responses, the 6k had 34, but this one had almost 90. For that reason, I really had to wean out a lot of stuff as to not make this a 45 minute video in a 3 part series. Anyway, let's get started. Damage resistance in this game actually stacks very high. Equip Infiltrator, get Frenzy, Underdog, and Quick Fix, and you're done. Well, sort of. These are the practical damage resistances. You can get other things like Up You Go, a teammate with Crew Chief, and the big finish of Painkillers. Technically, you could also factor in Combat Doctor and Die Hard, but at that point, it doesn't really matter anymore. See, there's one small problem with me playing the console version. This is the only console I own, and I don't think Payday is on it. Along the same vein, everyone asking me to sing more music from the game has a similar problem. I don't have the instrumentals of these songs. Unless you find these versions, I just can't do these songs that you all suggest. When it comes to builds, everything is viable. That is to say that everything can technically work. It's hard to get a worst build because of that. That said, you can put things together in a way that is optimized, but just really, really bad. What I dislike is people saying, Haha, my build is so bad! And then it has greys on an LMG. It's so uninteresting and effortless. For a build to fit this category, I think that it needs to be something that someone who is completely clueless could make unironically if they were told the bare minimum. So here's my take on it. While it's far from the worst, I guarantee this will be one of the most unfun builds you could possibly play. You could drop some skills to be more impractical in some places, but like I said, that's not how I would solve the problem. You like this horrible scope? No? Well, luckily we have side iron sights as an option. Oh, and look at that kick. Beautiful, ain't it? The melee. Shockingly useless. The reswing is abysmal, but you can technically do some damage with it. Frenzy Kingpin gets a health breakpoint if you have a convert and underdog with quick fix active. No first aid kits, though. Medic bags are what you're using for that 2 minute buff. Make sure to visit often. The Grom gets a one shot break point on heavies if you take some minor damage to Zerk, but be careful, don't accidentally Kingpin heal it back and lose it. Technically, there's nothing wrong with this build. But at the same time, there's nothing correct with this build. This is an interesting question, because it also has an interesting answer. I wouldn't say I'm good at experimental builds, just more used to them. Even though I'm above average skill level of the game, there aren't many players at, or even above my skill level, who would play the builds I do for the sake of enjoyment. A lot of people don't step away from what they're comfortable with, so when you give them a build that requires a different way of thinking, they understandably struggle with it. If you want to play funky builds at a level that won't get you banned from every pub, it's just going in steps and slowly lowering yourself into the world of unconventional builds. Don't instantly go for ridiculous ideas like the build I just showed. Another thing to understand is that you're going to die. You're going to fail missions. Hell, you'll even be kicked. That's just how it is. No one is perfect, and when playing tough builds, you aren't going to be performing nearly as well as you would with a normal build. If you can let go of that voice in your head telling you that you can be doing better with a different build, then you can have much more fun with it. This also applies to just about anything in my opinion. Don't beat yourself up over perfection, just enjoy what you're doing at the moment. I only ever take this game seriously when I'm recording a solo, otherwise I don't mind a few downs and even a custody every now and then. A lot of people have asked for tier lists, so I might as well do the ones I see as more interesting. I'm going to be ranking these based on how applicable they are. The more often it's used, the higher it'll place. Medic is quite a good tree. It has medic bags and, of course, Inspire that everyone loves. It's generally a good tree and can be applied to just about any build. Controller is a very powerful tree. Converts can be put on literally any build, and you'd kind of be a fool to not do that. The only reason to not go here is to challenge yourself. The sharpshooter tree, while making sniper rifles really strong, just isn't that handy for much else. Sure, there's a little bit of a reload buff, but, like, who cares? The shotgunner tree is very similar to the sharpshooter tree. It's great for shotguns. That's about it. The tank tree is another extremely powerful tree. Almost every single skill here is useful to builds. Resilience, Die Hard, Shock and Awe, Bullseye, and even Iron Man 
are all very strong skills. Transporter is the only meh skill in this tree. Ammo Specialist is quite a good skill tree as well. Bulletstorm is extremely powerful, and having more bullets is just handy for many builds. The Engineer tree is unfortunately not very good. Using turrets requires a massive amount of skill points if you want to do it optimally, and for that reason, this tree is very rarely used. The Breacher tree is very handy, as drill skills in C4 can help speed up many objectives. It's not really required, but taking stuff in this tree is very, very nice to have. The Oppressor tree, while focusing a lot on uh, rifles, SMGs, and uh, LMGs, is also applicable to many, many builds. Surefire and Lock and Load are pretty handy for most weapons. The Shinobi tree is a stealth tree. Unless you're going for the lockpick, and I guess ECM stun, there's no reason to be here, but you'd be much better off going anywhere else. The Artful Dodger just isn't practical. Unless you're using a dodge build, you're only going to be taking duck and cover, and maybe parkour. The Silent Killer tree is notorious for being free damage. It's very powerful, but not really a necessity. The Gunslinger tree, similar to Shotgunner and Sharpshooter, focuses on pistols. You're never really going here otherwise. I guess there's an akimbo buff, but usually it's just for pistols. The Revenant tree is hot trash. There's no real reason to take anything other than 9 lives here. It's a point sink that doesn't get you anywhere. The Brawler tree is pretty powerful. Melee boosts and damage boosts in general are handy, but unfortunately, not all decks can use Berserker. The Payday community makes a lot of memes, so a tier list of them would be interesting. Dallas needing a medic bag is just repetitive and not very funny. I don't know why people keep repeating this over and over like it's hilarious. Dallas ne Wait, hold on. What? Not more Dallas medic bag, please. There's so much, oh my god! Is it just Dallas? No, it can't be! I can't live like this anymore! Although I think this is a really cool idea, there's one small problem. Who even uploads Payday 2 anymore? If you consider the channels I had for my skill tier list, half of those literally just don't play the game anymore. A tier list wouldn't really be good if each tier had like no one in it. Of course, I could spread the list out to people who I'm not really friends with, but then I'd just be bullying smaller channels for no reason. You can make a judgment for yourself in regards to how good a channel's content is with a simple test. Is the video main monitor material or second monitor material? Also, this is a pretty good place to plug my second channel. I have a second channel in coalition with Bay1K, who makes great videos as well. This channel doesn't really have a schedule, nor a format. I suggest you check it out though, as it has quite varied content, ranging from shitpost edits to pseudo-podcasts to weird clips. I'll probably make a community announcement about this one day, but I'm not sure when. This is no longer the tier list section, by the way. I just wanted to mention this second part. One thing I do want to see change in this game is the perk deck balance, because it's pretty horrible. I actually want to do a video about this topic, rebalancing a lot of perk decks myself. However, I ran into an issue, being that I have absolutely no idea how to mod this game. Let it be known that I tried, and even with the help of Rocky, Creepy, and Stryler, I couldn't get very far. So this video will forever sit in limbo. I could upload it, of course, but the ideas are completely untested, which I wanted to avoid originally. After all, Balancing requires testing, right? Right overkill? Right? Absolutely not. The people just aren't ready yet. This is a pretty original idea, so I just had to do it. One disclaimer, however, I only started playing the game in late 2015, and even then, playing with quotation marks. It was my cousin's account, and only occasionally. I started actively playing maybe a year after that, so I can't speak 100% accurate to the meta before then. However, I did some research and read through the update history, so this is the best that I can put together. You can say that this is a historian's interpretation based off primary source documents. That said, let's get into a short history of Payday 2's meta. Single-celled life began in the form of armor. Just putting it on would put you ahead of the curve. For an era, this would not change. Even as Deathwish was introduced, life had only just started the multicellular phase. And then, after having been underwater for so long, 
The first animals crawled onto land in the form of Perkdex. Soon, life would rapidly expand outward. At the moment, Rogue was the dominant life form. While powerful, Grinder came out a little while later to overtake Rogue. On release, Grinder could survive just about anything, unlike Rogue, which had to avoid. However, after many millions of years, a new stage was entered, where the dominant life form became anarchist. Put on your heaviest armor, get frenzy, and you're unkillable. However, unlike Rogue's lengthy reign, a change was coming, one that everyone would need to adapt to. The old skills were no more, and new ones came in. The old builds had been flipped upside down, and new ones had to come in. But these changes wouldn't be the only thing to shake up the world. Move out of the way, Deathwish, welcome one down. A mass extinction of builds happened. After all, conditions were harder than ever to survive in. The survivors? Crossbows. Having teamed up with Rogue, we can still occasionally see these ancient animals around today. Having survived this difficult life for a while, the conditions loosened up a bit with higher headshot multipliers. However, the damage still being high, the meta had moved onto armor and anarchist shoulders. Rogue was no longer on top, and Grinder had been wiped out ages ago. Life moved on like this for a while, until a minor hiccup, the body expertise nerf. Dozers would no longer be affected, and neither would crossbows. Not a major change, and it was adjusted to fairly fast. However, not long after came a major change. The henchman update made bots more powerful than players, and having three was significantly more practical than having three measly humans. Around came the stoic perk deck, which at release was not fond over all too much. Everyone who was still bad at the game were unable to switch off Rogue. However, you may now know that this perk deck is one of the best in the game. Not long after came a shock to the system. The LMG buff whipped out its cock and showed it off, and what a cock it was. These LMGs absolutely annihilated enemies, so much so that they were nerfed in the next update. Not enough to matter, but let it be known that they were nerfed. Next update came another nerf. Swansong Ace was no longer 9 seconds, but 6. It didn't really matter, anyone with an LMG could still kill an enemy way before they could be killed. And now comes a powerful shift in the meta. One down was gone, replaced by Death Sentence. Less tanky enemies, but much more of them. Along with this change, Graze. This skill would swipe the meta out of the hands of LMGs and into the hands of sniper rifles. One skill gained, another lost. Specialized killing was no more. Rest in peace, massive damage buff for no reason. But what did it matter? More enemies? Who cares? Just graze them in one shot anyway. And so the meta stayed and waited. Sure, changes came and went, but nothing had come along to push snipers out. However, after a long bout of silence, Overkill released an update with a DLC. This DLC, while not containing meta-defining weapons, contained some really high concealment modifications, which would have their place for the many years to come. Since Overkill decided to release more DLCs, they chose to make them meta-defining. You know, for money. The M60, on release, was comically strong. Not only that, but the R700 that was added was a straight upgrade to what we already had in the game in every sense. There were no fugitives with this pack, only dead bodies. More time would pass with no major changes, and then came a rather random update, which buffed the M308 and AMR-16 pickup. DMRs had been powerful in eras prior, but not used as much. Soon would come their time to shine. Oh yeah, also 200 rate of fire and 200 damage contractor. Yeah, it's totally fine. Nice job, fellas. This was reverted after the realization of how sheerly idiotic the change was. One more cute little feature that was added was damage range multipliers. This was a very well received update in the community as an anti-player update. I mean, encouraging variety. Yeah, that's what I meant. Now, of course, it did no such thing as the multipliers did fuck all to encourage much of anything. From here on, Denko would officially be taking Jules' crown of having no clue how to balance. Not long after, a nerf to LMG pickup came. Alright, a new meta was being pushed. Oh, except sniper rifles remained unnerfed, and in fact, buffed from the range multipliers. Soon came another change, an electric explosive. These would stun enemies and help out with crowds. In the long scheme of things, absolutely useless. The changes continued, with a buff to muscle to quote-unquote, make it more viable for Deathwish. Although cool, the actual change to the meta here was the unintentional kingpin buff. 
this update was quite the comedy. Update 209 brought a Cash Blaster, which was a flamethrower with battle rifle damage. Alright. Even though it didn't last long, this could be thought of as potentially the strongest weapon this game has ever seen. The next update came with a shotgun nerf, which was absolutely irrelevant, as had been all of Overkill's shotgun nerf attempts. A nice change, however, was the low damage assault rifle buff. Unfortunately, it came packaged with the Lion's Roar buff, which just became a weapon with literally no downsides. Every stat was buffed, kind of like the Liebensauger. Let me remind you, snipers have not left the meta yet, and now the Liebensauger was similar to what the beta contractor was in terms of stupid buffs. Considering two weapons out of this update sit on my best weapons list, you can look at this update as pretty meta-defining. Payday's 10th anniversary came with some party balloons. These were no normal balloons, however, as shooting them would give god mode, infinite ammo, and various other effects. Throughout all this, achievements weren't disabled, so you could make an argument for this being the most powerful meta to ever hit this game. Only a short while later, something new came around, a new perk deck. Considering this hasn't happened in years, it was quite a shock. Another shock would come when using the deck, as Leech was comically overpowered, dethroning Stoic by a wide margin. Oh yeah, by the way, Stoic came back and took over the meta. This perk deck healed teammates, gave you invincibility, gave you free messiah, had a short cooldown. I mean, what didn't this perk deck do? Well, aside from fitting into the game, that is. Not long after, Leech was nerfed in a way that could be completely and utterly avoided. So, a uh, nice job, team. And the rest was history. Or, I guess the future, since that's where the meta stands now. Sniper rifles are still all powerful, and Leech tops the charts. Playing with bots is still better than players. Now, for some things that I didn't mention, if you're wondering about shotguns, they've always been good, but never truly the meta. Aside from Dragon's Breath, which is still obnoxious to this day. However, I didn't mention it, as they never really broke the game at any point, at least from what I can remember. A similar thing is with perk decks. I can't exactly say when which decks took over the meta. For example, Stoic on release was even stronger than it is now, but it just wasn't very popular, until it just randomly exploded, and I'm not really sure when. Other than that, what did you think? Are you a boomer that wants to fill in some details that I missed since I wasn't around? Feel free in the comments, I'm sort of interested as how that progressed myself. That was shockingly long, but I had fun with it. I tried to make it more entertaining with my travel through history, so I hope you liked it. I think that I'm going to stop doing these sub specials after 10k, as I'm already growing fast enough that a thousand extra subs comes fairly often, and I don't want to spam special videos. It doesn't make them very special. Maybe I'll cut back to every 5k or something. That said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.